Hey guys, what's up? It's like Superst here, and today I'll be reacting to episode 10 of Kimi ni Todoke. So, let's get on with it. Hey guys, before we continue with the reaction, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you won't miss any new uploads. And with that, let's go back to the reaction, starting now. Okay, these two know something, and I want to I want to hear what they have to say about it. <laughs> but are they really friends? Are they really friends? Out of the blue, though. Yeah, exactly. She still hasn't realized it, I guess, that she's somewhat starting to fall in love with Kazehaya. Some things, like what? Oh, they're so... They're so conscious. Oh, okay. I'm feeling very anxious about this. Oh, 
You, you're bothering me. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, why is she asking her for advice? Okay, what's her deal, really? What? They've been talking fine before this. Okay, she, you gotta shut up now. Oh. Sawako. just be me but I feel like she's pretty manipulative in a very subtle way okay uh, I guess as long as Sawako is fine with it that's probably that probably wasn't her intent at all Yep, backfired. Yep. She definitely... Okay, there we go. Finally, we got to see who she really is. Oh my gosh. Like reverse psychology, my ass. This girl. It's fine, it's fine, Sako. You're fine. Really. Thought he was just thinking that. Yeah, because you guys are too conscious of each other. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Say something, please. Yuji, 
か久しぶりに見た<笑>よかった<笑>そうだマルがでかくなったよ<笑>これくらいか<笑>あいつやんちゃだし家の中で走り回ると結構大変さ<笑>そろそろ犬小屋作ってやらないとThe dog that doesn't like her. <laughs> But anyway, it's nice that they're they're talking again. And they were able to break the ice as well. And of course, we'll see that girl right there watching over them. Kurumizawa? <laughs> should have just said no. I like, know. And also, she he should just be, you know, asking her out. Okay. Now we finally get. Who is this girl? What is she like in reality? What's her true self? She's very, very subtle. It has a very, very thick mask. There we go. Wow. <laughs> I think you did. Kazuhaya. It's obviously Kazuhaya. That's your fault. So she's using the same strategy that she did back in middle school. Oh no. Okay, okay. At the very least, we have some drama. This will move the, the story a little bit further. Yeah, this is definitely going to push her. To face her own feelings, right? Because this girl knows that she likes Kazuhaya. And also that Kazuhaya likes her. So yeah. She's definitely just going to try and make, a, make some chaos happen. Just like um, the other girls before. And with that backstory from Chizu, we kind of know exactly what kind of person this is, right? She, she's very manipulative. She hides behind this facade of being nice and so that she can get what she wants. Uh, I don't really want to label her as narcissistic, but 
<laughs> I think she's narcissistic. It's very offhanded, right? And very subtle. And you might think that she's trying to be nice to you or trying to be nice to everyone, but exact but but really her motive is very selfish. So you can say that um, she's power tripping as well, slightly, in that sense. And I don't know. It's either it's either she's narcissistic or she's psychopathic. But I don't think it's like uh, I don't think it's uh, psychopathy in that sense. Like because she just she will use whatever resource, whatever means she has. Use other people. Doesn't really care what consequences. That's what like psychopathy is, right? To get to her goal, but she's never done that. She's never actually tried to achieve the goal, which is to try and get with Kazuhaya. She's never done that, but she just wants to be the, I guess, the person who receives attention, kind of like the one in the in the previous one, trying to appear helpful, but. Uh, I don't know, just, I don't know. Appearing, uh, she tried to appear helpful, but was pretty selfish in the end about it. And I think that was a pretty calculated uh, plan as well. Getting Since everybody, she's realized everybody likes Kazehaya. So she made, she tried to help everybody, tried to help everybody. They will confess to Kazuhaya and once everybody and also <laughs> used Chizu for it. Right. Use Chizu so that you can get gain I guess everybody's um approval in a way. And then kind of made everybody uh stop from getting any closer to Kazehai. I think that's how it was, right? Uh, she all she kind of made him unreachable for everybody. So, you know, like, she wanted to make it look as if, you know, we're all equals here. We all like Kazehai, so he's everyone's Kazehai, so that nobody will get closer to Kazehai, so that in time, maybe, she will be able to get a chance with Kazuhaya, but she's never been able to do that. Um, I don't know exactly how Kazuhaya views her. The, the, it, it doesn't seem like she's got any... It doesn't seem like Kazuhaya views her any differently than anybody else. It doesn't even look her way, right? Kazuhaya, in Kazuhaya's mind, it's always just Sawako. Sawako, Sawako. And now, and now that she sees Sawako actually making progress with Kazuhaya, she feels jealous about it and wants to stir up trouble again. So, ah, uh, I don't know if you call that narcissism or just, I don't know, fake. <laughs> Uh, a double personality. I don't think so. Yeah, but she's very deceptive and manipulative. That's one thing I can say for certain. I don't know what type of person she is. I may be judging her a little bit too much just because, well, we can see that she has a little bit of malice, malicious intent toward Sawako. And she's a bit selfish as well. And masking that as being nice, trying to be helpful. But yeah, I guess Yano, Yano is very perceptive and sees the truth in the in the whole situation. Meanwhile, Sawako is just way too innocent and naive and very pure-hearted, so that none of the the things that um, Ume does, Kurumi does. Uh, actually affects her or discourages her. In fact, it it produced the opposite effect. It encouraged Sawako. But now we have this really obvious tension. Just it's a it's a declaration of war in a way, right? 
Uh, which, obviously, Sawako doesn't realize, but it's only because she's Sawako. And she doesn't really notice all of those uh, subtle cues being given. Um, but yeah, in this, in this sense, uh, Kuramizawa is declaring war on, on Sawako without Sawako even realizing it. So, I mean, these mind games are just, uh, I don't know why, why, why these have to, I mean, okay, in my mind, right? If you like this guy, then tell him you like him. I mean, I don't think there's any anything wrong with that. The guy doesn't have to be the one to confess first, right? You can tell a guy that you like him and, uh, you know, if he likes you back or if he thinks or if he would like to reciprocate the feelings, then he will say so. Otherwise, you know, you just have to let it go, move on and, you know, hope that maybe Someday you'll find the one for you. Um, feels like she has this obsession as, as well. Because if she's been doing this since middle school. Right? And... Well, okay. Then, then, then again, she never really did anything about it. She just wants to be... Um, admiring him from afar. But also... Wanting to have... Some sort of psychological possession over him. In, in the sense that if anybody else tries to get closer to him, you will try to rip them apart. So that's the thing, right? That's not normal. <laughs> that's just not normal behavior. And I don't know what's going on in her mind and why she's like this. Like, why do you have to bring other people down just because you can't... Um do it yourself or you can't really make any headway toward uh you know going out with Kazuhaya like maybe he doesn't really like you at all he doesn't see you that way so and it, it's annoying it's actually very annoying I just I don't understand um why I don't understand the the the, the reasoning the logic the psychology behind it I mean, right? If you like the person, then you can just confess. And if they don't, and they, if they reject you, then that's it. Move on. Like, it's not like you're going to die because of it, right? They were not meant for you. That's it. Or if they were meant for you, maybe it's not the right time. I don't know. But as it stands, they don't like you that way. I mean, they don't necessarily hate you, but they don't like you that way. Just move on. You don't have to uh, uh, get other people or, you know, you don't have to uh, bother other people's lives or drag other people down with you. Yeah, that's all. I mean, it's a bit annoying. Because she's taking advantage of Sawako's innocence and, and you know, pure-heartedness. And I understand why... Okay, I, actually, I don't understand why Yano isn't really uh, butting in. Why she's not intervening here. Right? For Sawako. But maybe this is Sawako's battle. Yeah, maybe that's what Yano's saying. But I feel like Yano also trusts that Sawako will not fall victim to Kuromizawa. So probably that's it. Because, you know, she did say, um, I wonder if her plan is going to work out. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but... Yeah, so I think he she knows that uh, Sawako... Sawako will be alright. But yeah, uh, that's episode 5. Uh, no, sorry, that's episode 10 of uh, Kimi ni Tokoke. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Thank you guys for watching until the end of this video. Click here to subscribe, and check out these two videos for more fun content. See you in the next one.